It's such a strange thing, isn't it? How, especially our generation, Generation Z, works as it pertains to this very topic. We seek validation. We, we, we need people to accept and welcome our thoughts, opinions, ideas, and our very being when it comes to stepping in to who we know we are. It's a strange, it's a, it's a strange, mind-boggling thing. Our very existence, us walking into a room and wearing a specific thing, walking into a room and saying a specific thing, walking into a room and doing a specific thing, we need others to tell us it is welcomed. We seek validation because it comes out of a place of wanting to be seen and wanting to be wanted. Right here is a great paragraph example that I found. It is no surprise then that any gap in these basic psychological needs leaves us open and vulnerable to rely on others for validation. When our self-esteem suffers and we don't believe in our own power, we turn to our community for help. In every sense, this is a wise decision. After all, our communities are there to help support us and lift us up when we're feeling down and out. It goes on to talk about how then, first, we need to turn to ourselves, our innermost needs. It comes from a lack of belonging, not thinking that you belong, not thinking that you deserve to be where you are. There was a quote that I heard one time that went, went something along the lines of this. It's not that we don't believe we're powerful. It's that we forget that we're powerful beyond our own means. That is so interesting. It's not that you think you're less than, it's that you know you're more than. However, you get, af you get afraid of your own power. Power and presence is different for everyone. You know, for some people, some of that validation does come from their trauma and things that have happened when they were younger. And, and some of it is born and bred within you. Not believing that you are good enough in order to hang. Not believing that you're good enough to simply be the person they are. You, you feel as if you have to be someone else in order to fit in. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, you don't need to fit in. A lot of these people that you may want to be around, a lot of these people that you may want to surround yourself around, you don't need. Newsflash, you don't need because they're not on your level. Sometimes in our society, the media, film, cinema, TV, can portray what our lives should be, forgetting, forgetting that we are individuals that goes beyond what the stereotypical teenager today is. I wanna read what I actually said earlier because I think it's just, it's, it's so beautiful. It says, first and foremost, we need to turn inward to our own basic needs and see if they're being met. Do we feel a healthy sense of belonging where we are in life? If not, what or who is standing in our way? Are we equally receiving and giving love? And more importantly, how are we nurturing love for ourselves? These are deep and important questions to consider and ones that guide us further towards self-actualization. If someone lacks self-belief, it is generally related to now then the next step, seeking validation. Validation in so many, so, so many things. From the simple to the large, from the, how should I do my hair today, to what should my career be? We don't need to seek validation. We don't need other people's approval of the way we're gonna live our life. We do it though, out of a lack of self-esteem and belief in ourselves. If I need you to validate my choices for me, I can never form my own opinion about my own life, my own existence, my very livelihood. Which is why every day I try and step into my presence and am unapologetic about it. And I'll admit, some days I fake it till I make it. Some days I walk into a room and I get a little nervous or I may get a little anxious. But what do I do? I say, Isaiah, <laughs> <laughs> when you walk into the mall, you may feel like everyone's looking at you. Well, good. All eyes should be on you. Reversing the psychology of it. Completely reversing it. 
because it is it is in the mind truly it is in the mind truly it is just simply rewiring the way that we think about ourselves about our bodies about our face we in the society are so obsessed with always being attractive whatever it is that we do someone doesn't have to compliment you for you to feel good about you you have to compliment you it is the world's job as a matter of fact to hate you they're and they're doing their job just fine so it's now your job to love you nurture you care for you pour into yourself because if, if i can believe in myself truly and i can believe in my choices what's stopping me Tr- truly honestly what what's stopping me if i have all the power in the world that i can muster within myself and i don't need you to validate any of my choices for me or tell me that yes that's a good shirt yes it's a good idea yes you should go into that career field then there's nothing stopping me in this generation because of the way we've been trained as i said by the media by tv by film by those around us that then fall into those ideas we don't think we're good looking enough or skinny enough or light skinned enough we don't think we're hey using this but man enough good enough wealthy enough well you are more than enough more than enough more than enough it took me to have a few experiences to recognize that it really did it took me to realize that comes out of the realization that the world's going to hate you for you so i have to love me that nobody else is going to live this life for me but me it takes the realization because imagine you ask you don't even ask you just make the statement oh i feel fat today and your friend says yeah you do look fat today think about some of the statements that we make oh i really don't feel pretty today subconsciously we already know what we want our friend to respond with no you look fine you look fine <laughs> you look fine what if our friend didn't say that what if our friend said yeah you look a little rough you look a little rough today then we would say that hurt then why did we say it about ourselves self love is the most important love you need they always use the oxygen mask analogy you have to put it on yourself first so that you can take care of the person you love Because if you're not filled up to 100%, how in the world are you going to help somebody else fill up to 95? Maybe you only need to be at 90, but you need to fill yourself up first. And then go and fill others up. That's something I'm having to learn as well. I'm so insistent. I'm so driven on the basis of work 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 fight for your dreams fight for your dreams give everything to that while forgetting to do the simple things to take care of myself but if there's anything i don't need it's someone else's validation about my own choices not because i believe i'm better than but because i already know the world don't like me So I've got to love me, validate my own choices, make sure I know I am more than enough. Because my presence and your presence should never be underestimated. Never underestimate the power of your presence because your presence mm, is a present. Thank you.